morning and so I'm going to do a little painting of the pelicans. Um, so this is an oil painting demonstration. Thanks so much for joining me. And uh, if you're watching later, uh, or if you're joining me live, please feel free to leave comments and I will come and answer them and uh, respond. And I always appreciate comments. Just making sure I have comments and chat pulled up. And then So if you can hear me, uh, give a little chat. Oops. Laura will comment later on. And, um, and also, as always, I would love it if you chatted or commented and let me know. Um, where you are watching from and who you are. Okay, so I've got a super messy palette. I've been working on this large painting in the background. A lot of blues and greens. And once I mix up a big pile of paint, it's kind of hard to say goodbye to it. Bye, baby. <laughs> so I have been uh, struggling. Somebody has hacked into my Facebook pages and um, and so I found tech support and got tech support and they sort of halfway got me um control of my pages again and then a couple days later which was <laughs> just earlier today i lost control of my pages and um oh it's so frustrating that they won't tell me if i've been hacked or if there was some technical glitch with their latest update uh so wish me luck on that and um, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever <laughs> excuse me I don't know if you've ever had that happen but oh it's the first time was very stressful and the second time is just super annoying because it's so time consuming. And they really are not forthright with their information at all. Even after they solved it last time, they wouldn't tell me if I was hacked or if it was a technical glitch, which I'm guessing kind of answers that question on its own. But, okay, so here we go. So um, this is how I usually pull up images to look from and what I love about this method is that I can zoom in, um, I can zoom out, I can crop and I'm thinking that today this is just gonna be like a fun little portrait of this guy right here and so we had a wonderful trip this morning out to Oakwood Lake State Park and um, and there were so many pelicans there and they just they really make me happy they're so um, <laughs> they just seem so unlikely to actually be able to fly and they're so cute. I love them. So here we go. I'm just gonna go for a big old portrait. Good. 
actually. Plenty of room for this wonderful beak. And, and again, I'm working on, uh, oh, isn't this fun how the neck kind of snakes around? And if you are uh, painting along with me at home and you want this photo to uh, zoom in on, on your own, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll upload it. I have several photos, source photos that um, people have asked me to share out and um, I just upload those on my website on the uh, classes and live demo pages page. Excuse me. Just doing my sketching. I'm not worried about the values yet. I'm just worried about the outline and got a lot of this lean painting medium here. this wonderful coloring, black, white, and orange. Capture a little bit of that with my outline here. And when I've taken photos of these guys in the past, usually they're just um, hanging out swimming around or standing around and uh, I don't really see them fly so that was really exciting for me to get to see them flying today. Okay, I'm going to turn this into a little bit of a value study here. Darker areas. I'm just getting the dark and light of the bird. Yeah. The underbelly of the bird. So, welcome new people. Uh, please give a chat and let me know who you are and where you're watching from. And, uh, There we go. So there's this whole colony of um, pelicans that live in this park, it's a state park, and um, I probably mentioned before that 
when I first saw them, I was just so surprised that pelicans lived in the Midwest. It, um, you know, I always think of them as being so coastal. See them on the Southern California, Florida, and um, so seeing them on these little lakes is just such a treat and um, and uh, I just I can't get enough of them Painting really is good for the nerves. Sometimes it can be stressful when a painting is really challenging, but uh, I had just been chatting with Facebook technical support and, uh, you know, trying to get my, <laughs> figure out if I was hacked or if they, if they just had a complete glitch. And, um, oh, it's very, very stressful. It's, uh, I, I was actually surprised that they had a, a real human, but, um, yeah. And so, anyways, <laughs> I was so stressed out talking to them, and then here I start painting, and I can already feel the stress kind of disappearing. So I'm going to try to get that pretty blue. This is just such a simple color combination here with this uh, lovely blue sky and then just the black and white and orange and not a lot of color variation, I don't think, in the shadows here. So I'm just mixing my sky color and let's see it needs to move into the purple area a little bit more. A little more, a little more of a warmer blue. And if you missed my uh, little um, talk about warm and cool colors and why this blue might be warmer than a different blue and you're curious about that you're always welcome to ask things like that um, so I, I know a lot of you come back for all of my uh, live demos which I appreciate it's so fun seeing you on there and uh, and then I'm you know I also get some new people so Uh, your questions are always very welcome. So I'm just getting lighter and lighter. And I like this value right here. Today I'm feeling very brushy. I have in the past had some lovely smooth backgrounds and some wild and crazy ones. Today is a wild and crazy day. I'm just uh, just gonna be all about the the brush work. A lot of thick paint. So I like this mid value here. I think I think it'll really show the lights and the darks.
so skies when they're uh, just solid blue with no um, clouds they do have um, a gradation but this is such a small section of the sky I can't really see that very much in the photo teeny bit lighter on the bottom um, so I'm gonna get the bird in there and uh, see what the painting needs um, I'm guessing some gradation would really help a good painting to be you know have some interest okay This is just the carving in and not sure. This would be like a little bit of play back and forth between the background and the bird to get the shapes right and also just um, I want some real areas this time of um, ambiguity of you know, where is that background and where where is the bird and areas where maybe I can play with that idea a little bit of um, of. Uh, have lost and found edges, but maybe push that a lot. So let's see. Let me know if you're painting also, and um, you're also welcome to, um, you know, if you have your own uh, channel, you're welcome to let us, just let everybody know who you are. Uh, and, uh, Share out what your passions are. I'm just let's see. I really want this white to stand out, and I want it to stand out differently from this. I'm trying to decide. I think I might do like a cool little bit of underpainting down here. So when we first went to the park this morning, it was very overcast. It was kind of sprinkling and the whole sky was gray. And there was, um, there were, uh, there was no like light and shadow area. Um, it just was no direct light. And, um, and then pretty quickly the clouds all burned off and all of a sudden we had this magnificent uh, lights and shadows and um, so beautiful to watch. So I'm getting in some light, but it's, um, you know, it's a little bit of a warm color and I think it'll be a nice um, kind of undercoat 
for the really brightest colors to um, shine off of. I'm just getting a little bit more specific with my value study here. Um, I'm kind of thinking through how, how I'm really going to make, make this make a statement. Just, you can see I'm just mixing in a teeny bit of my sketching color to warm this up. And that way I can really take control of where my brightest grids will be. And let's see, I can do a kind of an undersketch here. Do a sky color, but a little bit. Warmer and grayer. So the sky color was ultramarine and cerulean blue. And so to warm it up, I'm using um, Dirty brush, so it has the red in it, and ultramarine. And I want it to be a little bit lighter, also. And I put a little bit of the cerulean in there, also. Just kind of dulling it down a little bit. And I'm happy with that. A little bit lighter. here for my drawing lesson last Thursday, I had taped off the paper to um, you know, keep, the, keep a nice clean outline, and um, this tape is just to hold it down. Um, I'm going to, uh, when I mount this, uh, when I mount loose paper, I trim off all the extra or fold it underneath so you can't see it. And with standard frames, the outside eighth of an inch all the way around is, um, is hidden. And so um, you won't see anything outside about, about there, which um, is really interesting when, when you work on small uh, like little teeny paintings, that can be a huge percentage of the actual painting area. And so putting some marks there at the very beginning so that nothing crucial is outside that area can be a really important part of the process. Uh, this is 8 by 10, so, um, you know, still that's a fairly large percentage of the canvas space and you can get floating frames which um, which show the entire 
canvas and then the frame is sort of outside the canvas. Those are pretty neat, but um, but they're usually more expensive and um, you really have to make sure your edges are beautiful. Um, and it's a kind of a specific aesthetic thing too. So since, since I'm coming back, I'm trying to decide about this chunk right here. If that's part of the way the wing is formed or if that's for some sort of injury. Um, but there it is. A little bit of character there. But, uh, so since I'm coming back with the uh, wing colors, I can kind of go over with the background. Um, go inside where the edges would be. Um, and if I don't, then I'll end up with hard edges or, um, should I move this? Because I'm drinking with that up. Okay. Um, you know, or empty spaces or awkwardness. So I've just found for the way I like to paint, it's better to go over than than uh, risk going under. So, let's see, I want this to look like it's blended in an interesting way. And I'm gonna leave that pretty blue since uh, I just really make it pop with the orange. And this area right here, the values are so similar. I really like that. So let's make the colors different. Um, the background is so much of a blue, and the neck is such a warm gray. Don't these guys look like it's just surprising that they can be <laughs> able to fly? Just their proportions. So interesting. So a couple announcements. Um, I am still trying to see how much interest I can get in a couple different classes. Um, one is a four-month painting mentorship, and um, and the others would be just a um, like a three-hour um, painting class that would be sort of a specific theme and um, and project. So uh, it would be kind of a paint along, but not a paint party. It would be learning how to do something that you would take home, um, you know, all the skills for, for doing, uh, for painting anything, but just as, as a specific theme for the class. So if either of those sound fun, um, you can sign up for the waitlist in my description link, or you can just uh, email me and uh, let me know. Uh, 
I, uh, I really enjoy doing small group painting classes in my studio, but uh, we are practicing social distancing in our home. And, uh, and I really wanted to take it online for a long time anyways, and so this is kind of something I already wanted to do, but it's a very good reason to do it this way. So I like that the wing and the belly are kind of the same, very similar values. And, uh, Kind of searching for ambiguity right now like where are some edges that can disappear and that seems like a good place and then the bird itself feels a little bit like black and white um, with all of these grays in here, it's really interesting. Let's see, I'm really squinting down at this to see how close those values are because I I really want that uh, fun ambiguity of the part of this bird being kind of the same value as the um, as the sky. Like I'll lighten up the sky just a touch. And got my bristle filbert out today. I just want some really thick, strong brush strokes. <laughs> just This guy's got his eyes wide open. To get out my tiny round brush for that. That's such a little, little spot of an eyeball. And then I'll get out a fresh brush for the white whites. Darken that up a little bit. There's more of a shadow on the inside of the wing than there is up here on the neck. So just work up that a little bit. And I'm really 
to say, I think we need to get some oranges in here. Some oranges and then some really dark darks. So, those guys there. And Excuse the jiggle, I'm looking for more yellow. Don't, uh, I don't feel like my paintings are super yellow as a, just as an overall look of them, but, oh, I feel like a lot of that color. Okay, here we go. A nice solid orange and then adjust from there. So, and I'm using the um, cadmium free uh, Utrecht yellow and orange. So it's based on a cadmium color as a reference. It's uh, similar to a cadmium color, but you can see a little bit of a, of a difference, but, um, but of course they're healthier. flatten out the top of this draw strip a little bit. So welcome new people. You are invited to uh, chat and let me know where you're watching from and who you are. And uh, I am going super brushy today. So today I got to see one of these guys uh, lifting off from the water so his legs are still down and uh, boy it's just so interesting how these guys <laughs> fly with these giant bubbly bodies. Feet back here and it's a little bit grayer up here.
add a little bit of dimensionality to this beak. So for anybody who missed it, um, we went up this morning to a um, state park that's not too far away from here, and there's a group of pelicans that are there through the summer, and they're really delightful and wonderful, and um, uh, they were... They were out doing their normal thing today. This is this is from a photo of them this morning, and uh, it was so fun to see them. There's a large grouping, and they're all synchronized, so you know, they'll all kind of turn left and they dive at the same time. <laughs> and they all kind of itch at the same time. Preen their feathers. It's so fun. And uh, I haven't gotten much opportunity to see these guys fly around. So I was really excited when these birds took off and started heading towards us. So let's see. I like what's happening here. So I'm trying to decide what to do. And this, again, I'm going way over so I can cut back in and have a little bit of room to play back and forth. So by the end, I don't really want any lines that are just like sort of long, continuous, unbroken lines. Let's see. I'm just going to hint at the eyes. I do have some character here. And I'm using all filbert bristle brushes today, and they work very well as erasers as well as you know adding paint. And so I'm kind of scraping down to the orange underpainting in here a little bit. I'm not really adding any paint, I'm just uh, moving paint around and, and removing it. And I want this area to be a little bit more subtle. And warm it up a little bit. So if any of my regular people are here, if you could chat a little um, note, that would be awesome. I'm not seeing chats today, and I'm not sure if that's because people are feeling shy, which is totally fine, or because I'm... Uh, I'll, I'll chat to online. Oh, thanks. Sometimes the chats don't come through. Okay, everybody's shy today. So, yeah, I felt like uh, angels were singing when the 
<laughs> the sun came out on all these pelicans. And uh, that's just exactly what I had been hoping to see. Um, and I've actually been going back there for years now trying to get good photos of these pelicans and they're always really far away or it's um, very overcast. I don't know. So today was extra exciting. So, I'm saving those bright, bright whites for um, a little bit further down the road, but just get a little bit of a Highlight in here. And so then this beak. I like the, the marks, but um, Maybe I just need to clean up the shape a little bit. There we go. Get my brush for sky color. Like I said, I really don't want any areas that are just long, straight, continuous lines like this. So so today I'm going to blend this out with some warmth. And... Yeah, and sometimes I get really smitten with a brush stroke, and then it's hard to go in and change it, um, even when I know it'll have a positive impact. So I'm going to leave this for a minute just because I, I like that brush, the, the palette knife mark. And I'll just kind of work on other stuff for a minute and let that live right there. Okay, and then these guys, their top beak is so narrow. I think the asymmetry there is part of what makes them so beautiful.
I feel like that's getting a little bit of the personality, this kind of, um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. And there we go. I want some of that orange to be right up on the blue right in here. Use this as an eraser again. And I feel like that hard edge, I like it visually, but it's confusing. I don't know if this is what the kill your doll darlings phrase is about, but uh, often I get to the point in a painting where the thing that still is left to be done is to get rid of the, something that, that I really love about the painting, some mark, or sometimes it's a a figure or an animal that uh, that I, I just love the way it was painted, but it is holding the painting back. And, um, so I think that's always kind of an interesting dance between um, you know what the painting needs and. Uh, And you know, sometimes the marks that you really want to make. So. I like that this is starting to be oh, a similar value. I think that's really fun. And this is my uh, my sky paintbrush again. Keeping separate paintbrushes for different colors that I know I'm coming back to is a really recent thing for me, but you know, it only lasts so long because pretty soon the, you're mixing the paints together and, and uh, you know, your paintbrush isn't completely one color or another anymore, but, uh, but in the meantime, it, saves a lot of uh, time. Here, let's 
There we go. That's kind of what I was wanting was just the, the bird color and the sky color kind of mixing together right in here. How's this? Uh, gosh, I just love this. <laughs> how they uh, kind of organize their necks while they're flying. So out on this lake, <clears throat> there are a bunch of herons and, um, and pelicans and a couple other kinds of birds that I'm not really sure what they are. Um, and they all kind of hang out right there together. So welcome new people and um, please feel free to ask any questions you want. Okay, I think this uh, bird is ready for a little bit of dark Dark wingtips. So if you've been here for a little while and you are liking this live uh, <laughs> event here, please uh, give it a like. That helps out my um, my numbers. So YouTube uh, knows people like me. And um, if you're watching later on, uh, your comments I will answer also. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Karina. Thanks for commenting. Yeah. It's um, it's different painting, um, you know, whole having my canvas and my materials in a way that shows up on YouTube. It's a lot different than the way I do it on my own, but um, you know, it, it makes more and more sense every time. I think. And I always appreciate people's comments. Like if you let me know that, uh, you know, something's easier to see this way or that way. I appreciate that. Oh boy. So I love this color. It's, uh, has a lot of alizarin crimson in it. And there's a little bit of a glow with the cadmium red under painting there. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that when I pick up paint, I wipe it right off so it doesn't end up in my, in my um, dark pile. Because that can really lighten up the entire pile. So I get some onto the canvas so I can spread it out from there. And... In certain areas, a lot more light seems to be coming through, so I have some subtle changes here. 
And uh, Karina says I make it look easy. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate that. No. And thanks for joining. Um, if you are new to this channel, I um, I do live painting usually a couple times a week, and um, and I've been hunting for my best times. So um, the best way to find out when I'm doing that is um, you know if you subscribe, you'll get a notification. If you subscribe and hit the bell, you get a notification from YouTube. And if you uh, sign up for my um, notifications of when I go live, then I just send out a little email and let people know what my schedule is for that week when I figure it out. And then I'm always here on Thursdays at noon for drawing lessons. Try to get that subtle difference of you know, the light through the wings. I like this warm dark color and I'm still trying to be, you know, keep all of my brush strokes here. I'm just really celebrating the brush strokes today. Yeah. And there we go. Get my brush stroke a little bit more feather shaped. Okay. And I'm still using the same five colors I usually do. Um, and thinking about going back to quinacridone red. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I've been using alizarin crimson for uh, know, about six months, maybe. Um, but I miss quinacridone a little bit, even though it is so hard to pronounce. <laughs> it, it felt like it made a stronger purple. And, uh, and, you know, honestly, I don't use super strong purple that often. Um, but, uh, I'm doing a portrait in which there's a purple cowboy hat and um, you know a lot of times with my process I like to mix the exact color I see and then I adjust it um, to kind of more of what I feel like works in the painting and I, you know I probably would have dulled it down but it just didn't get that same strong purple I would have gotten and, um, you know, with a different red. And so that was an interesting eye-opener for me. And yes, the whole point of using color palette like this with um, warm and cool uh, red and yellow and blue except for the yellow I just have the one but a warm and cool red and yellow is that um, you know it should cover the spectrum with um, with the warm red making a beautiful orange really a strong orange and the cool red making a really strong violet and um, and so yeah it's always it's always interesting to learn what exactly the colors 
can and can't do. And I've done a lot of um, um, like color charts where I mix my different colors together to see you know how much of the spectrum I can cover. And um, you know, there's a little bit of of um, well, I've made changes since the last time I've done that. So that's uh, that's kind of fun. So let's see. I want my edge here to be interesting, but I also I'm, so I'm working on my shape first and just getting in a lot of paint so that I can um, have something to work with when I come back and, and kind of look at my edges. And let's see. So this is kind of the shadow side of the wing, a little darker. And then this will be similar colors, but lighter. It looks a little cooler, like there's more of the sky reflecting onto it. There we go. I kind of inadvertently mixed up sort of a burn upper here. Yeah. Go a little bit grayer. This has a very purpley feel. Let's see how it how it goes up there. And let's see. So first getting all the brushes messy today <laughs> okay so first I'm gonna kind of find this edge a little bit and And here we go. I, uh, I like something that's happening right here quite a bit. And then these fun little feathers. These just have so much character. I'll leave some of that underpainting right there and in here too. Let's see. Today is definitely all about these big brush strokes and kind of wildness. And what I'm coming here with my sky color was getting a little bit messy, so I'm just gonna use it as a mixing paint now. And 
and kind of enjoy having um, a little bit of really warm underpainting come through. Oops. But to make that work, to be so specific, or so careful with that first paint stroke so that it's, you know, so sort of in the right place. And, uh, you know, so won't need to mess with it too much. So the underpainting disappears very quickly. And... Okay, let's see. To fix, I don't want that to be in exactly the same spot. The wing and the the front wing and the back wing that kind of awkward so let's see let's see where it needs to move here I think it's actually the back wing so I want the ambiguity with um, you know, with my brush strokes out here, um, but what I don't want are accidental, um, edges that are in exactly the same place, and, um, let's see. Get some of this patterning right here. And there might just be a tiny bit of the of the underpainting that shows through in the end. That'll be okay. And you can see I'm, as I make the brush strokes, I pick up the dark paint that I just laid down. And then I have to wipe it off so that I don't end up mixing it into my light mix here. It's just a very good habit. You know, if you're... Um, for, for whatever color is, if it's lighter or darker underneath, it's a very good habit to wipe it off so you make sure you're, um, you're using the color you are trying to use. Okay, I like, I feel like the variety right in here is pretty close what I'm going for. And so this area, I feel like it needs a little underpainting. I'll let that sit for just a second before I come back and put white over that part. And okay. I can make sure this shape is on right here. So if you have a certain kind of bird that's close to you, something that either you want to paint or that you'd like to see painted in a demo, 
Let me know. And then up here, I want this to disappear a little bit. Hmm. Trying to chase that perfect amount of blending together and being its own thing. And and Okay, I think it's time for a really white white. So, let's see. Take a little bit of let's see. A little bit of blue right in here so that the canvas color isn't really competing with the bird color. And let's see. Because I, I want this white to really pop. Okay, so this guy is getting more teal towards the top and darker. Still leaving on my brush strokes and just kind of covering up some of this. Well, a lot of this white back here. make this transition a little more subtle. For the right brush, put the white on top, and I need to wash brushes. If I'm, I leave that all for you know one one time. And if you struggle with washing brushes, there's a really good trick for that um, for brushes that you've left for months or years with oil paint on them for acrylic you can't <laughs> just don't leave them 
But if you've left your oil brushes for months or years, you can um, put them um, in a container with half Murphy's oil soap and half water. And uh, depending on how long you've left them, uh, they'll, they'll be usable again in a couple days or a week. It makes them uh, a little bit uh, softer feeling, uh, but, but it works if you are not super nice to your brushes. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Let's get the greatest bright. My edge didn't really pull an interesting here. Oh, hi, Karina. Um, so, uh, no, just my mom is an artist. And um, for, uh, so Karina was, <laughs> was asking about my parents and their art. And um, so, yeah, my mom is an artist. And her dad has done some, some beautiful creative um, artworks. Um, and so he does, um, like concrete stuff, really interesting. Um, although that was not his, uh, his job. It was, it was something that he did for, um, for fun. And, and then when I was growing up, my mom has been an artist. Um, my whole life and so I think that was it was neat getting to grow up and, and see that and be around artists um, and so for people who don't know her yet she's over on Ultimate Paper Mache that's her and um, she does totally awesome sculptures So thank you, Karina. I, I really appreciate your, your sweet chats. I love it. So should have toned this area down a little bit. This really thick paint. I'm not sure if you can tell from your angle. Um, some areas are very, very thick here. And so it's fun having certain kind of um, values and colors, but also it's, uh, it's, you know, there's the thickness of the paint itself that you can play with. Okay, so. Get this shape. bit more subtlety right in there. Okay, so I know I'm all full of announcements today. So I told you about the class. I'm trying to 
kind of see how much interest there is in the mentorship class. Also, I'm starting up a um, project I'm calling Portraits of Love, and it's um, kind of inspired by a project I did 12 years ago of uh, moms and babies. Uh, I did portraits of moms kind of snuggling with their babies uh, from people who sent me photos from I think 30 different states and so this time I'm opening it up um, to um, I'm just kind of opening it wide up so I'm calling it portraits of love it's the idea at first was that it would be similar to the last project but it would be like dads and babies moms and babies kids uh, pets that kind of relationship like where you're caregiving and you're feeling attached and um but um but also i'll just open it up <laughs> to to portraits in general so if anybody wants to see their portrait done um, you just contact me and um, you can send over a picture. If I don't get back to you the same day, um, then something's gone haywire. So just uh, send me an email and let me know. Um, but uh, I think it'll be a neat project. And so, um, and there's more information about that on my website for anybody that wants details about it. And I'm hoping to do 50 of them and then make a nice little book out of it. And I'm just kind of finishing the first one. So, um, so you'll be seeing that in the next couple days. The first one is, um, you know, it's more challenging than the rest because I'm really trying to define what the whole series will be like, you know, how abstract, um, uh, you know, what kind of texture, whether it's oil or acrylic or, you know, all that stuff. So I've actually done a couple different paintings and I'm going back and forth and kind of looking at what I like from each one and there's a whole bunch of kind of behind the scenes to the to the first one that's um that maybe maybe it would be a surprise you know with that whole uh searching process for you know what what really is this all about Okay, I'm looking for the right color here. So, I'm going to be a teeny bit lighter than that, with the area adjacent to it. There we go. But, uh, but kind of in the same color spectrum. And then this, I feel like, is too much of a big block of the same color. So I'm going to make that a little bit more subtle. And I think, especially over here. Let's see. I think this is kind of pretty close. And just get a little bit of subtlety. But uh, 
You know, the light coming between the wings. It's funny, I feel like I end up with paint on my hands a fair amount, and then I, uh, I've had a couple times when I realized after I was done streaming <laughs> that I had a big blob of paint on my face while I was uh, in camera. Um, but uh, I've been painting with acrylics more recently, and uh, and for that, I don't worry so much about it being on my hands, and so I end up <laughs> really, really painted up. It's pretty funny. So this is me at my most cautious with the with the paint. So there's this subtlety to the way that the light part of the wing meets the dark part of the wing. And I just want to capture a little bit of that the variation and um, it's, it's really lovely, the, the subtlety of it. And there's this shadow from the wing right here. It helps form it a little bit. It's getting very close. Shadow there. And that got a little bit Hmm. It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she does have totally awesome work. So, um, there's always a delay if I if I <laughs> reply to your comment five minutes late. Uh, there is. Um, there's a like a technological delay before I see it, but also just um, you know when I'm looking at the painting, I uh, I don't always notice them straight away the comments. But uh, Karina mentioned that my mom's work is totally awesome, and it it really is. A little bit more of that. I feel like that's bringing it forward a little bit. It kind of needed that. A little bit more of the darkness in the front. And. Soften this part up and bring up this white area a little bit. So I think this one is almost done. Um, please like if you liked, 
subscribe if you want to see more and um and then click the bell so it will tell you when i go live and um and feel free to make any kind of questions comments that kind of thing and um thanks a bunch for joining me in the studio today i i hope this was interesting and fun So, there are a couple of things I'm going to change around here. One thing is, let's settle right there. One thing is that even though the sky is darker up here, the fact that the sun's coming from this direction, I think having a little bit more darkness down here would kind of emphasize that point. Thinking about darkening that up just a smidge. And I'm gonna break up this long line right here just a little bit. I like the, the kind of solidness right there, and then right here, I'm gonna soften it. And down here also. the light right here. Playing with that separation between the body and the neck a little bit. And between the bird and the background. Very subtle little very subtle little lighter area right there. And huh. so I'm trying to decide this like dark against the light and then the dark against the light. I'm trying to decide if I like that or if I do want to darken it up down here a little bit. 
think I might leave this the way it is and um, just kind of live with it for a little while. Well, thanks again for joining me and um, let me know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I uh, I hope that was interesting and fun and um, have a great week. If you if you like coming to my um, my drawing class, then I will see you on Thursday, um, and then I'll be back for another painting demo uh, probably Saturday. And um, let me know what you think of this time. Um, and, uh, and always, I, I just haven't quite settled on the right time for the painting demos yet. So I'm still kind of hunting for that and, uh, people's votes and feedback is, is still appreciated in that area. Well, hello, new person. I'm, um, I'm just kind of wrapping up. So you are welcome to scroll this back to the beginning and um, your comments that you make, uh, even if you make comments after I'm gone, I respond to those really quickly. I'm going to add a little bit of deeper color right in here. I'm using a bristle brush so that the marks they leave are very distinctive. For anybody interested in learning more about me, uh, you can see my artwork and the classes I teach and, um, and more about my art stuffs at my um, website, which is in the description. Oh, that's a little bit stronger right there. Get need of that. A little bit more value right, right in here. So the highlight kind of stands out.
Okay. I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, here, this always takes this. I can't figure out. Yeah, I had to get it lined up just right. Okay, there it is. So that's how it turned out. And you can see that it has very, very thick paint. Some little impasto brush strokes over there. So if you want to um, have access to the source photo, just let me know in the comments and um, I have a place on my website where I upload things, um, source photos that people ask for. And um, other than that, thanks for coming. Um, it was nice to meet new chatter. Thank you. and. Um, I will see you next time.